Hello, this is Haku the Bean, and I am back with even more of the same SCP-6666, also known as the Tree. We're going to return to this and read some more addendums before I have to oh, cut it off again. Because I don't think I'm going to be reaching the end for a few videos, which will take a lot of a while. Unless I decide to actually combine these all into a long compilation, but that'll be like a three, four hour long video. As for usual, if you liked the video, please leave a like on the video, comment down below, and subscribe to the channel. And if you don't like the video, then you're about to waste about half an hour or so. Maybe a bit less of time than that, but you're going to be wasting some time. That is the point. Let's get into it. Addendum 6666.3 SU Entity Interview No, certain elements of this interview may be redacted or altered per protocol 4000 SU. Oh yeah. The following is an interview with an honored and fettered representative within the Old Forest. The interview was conducted by Dr. Park Ar Daesung during the mandated yearly observance of Ord or 054000F26. Thank you for your time. Thank you for taking the time to speak with me. I won't keep you very long. Of course, of course. It is no trouble. Not for me. Not for me. Not often do I get many travelers this far off the road. This is a pleasant surprise. Can I make you some tea? Have some tobacco? We don't get much here. You know, but I have something of a stash saved up for such an occasion. No, thank you. Unfortunately, today is strictly business. Very well, suit yourself. More for me. Now, what can I do for you? Some time ago, agents of ours discovered a strange structure deep in a massive forest in the south. It's long since been abandoned, but we believe it is some kind of prison. Some of the markings said were similar to those we found in this place. Are you familiar? The avian interviewee readjusts nervously. Oh, well, yes. We always heard stories, you know. I never saw it for myself, but you heard stories. High walls of stinking black stone. Screaming, I imagined, would be mostly reduced to a robot by now, though. It has been quite some time. Who were the children of the night? The winged collaborator's eyes grow wide. They suddenly, they stand suddenly and move to close the blinds over a nearby window. Forgive me if I've spoken out of turn. No, no, you did nothing wrong. Just not something I've spoken of, really. At least non-pleasant company. What were they? At first they were like you and like us. Children, like we all were. They woke up in the forest, like we did. But not in the treetops. Up there we could see the stars, but down below, the children of the night were in almost total darkness. We... they stayed down there. We figured they just preferred it that way. Where did they come from? I... I can't really say. It really was a long time ago, but there are probably some here who might know more or are better. I tried to stay out of it. I had a shop in the old white city on the coast, back in the before times. They were in the dark forest in the south, but you heard stories. They've got an artifact hung up in that prison. The jailer air calls it the Heart of Titania. Do you know anything about... The common flightless fiend gasps slightly, then reaches into a pocket and produces a locket. They stare at it... it briefly. What can you tell me about this Titania? We caught her... Yeah, uh, the sleeper in the stars. On a dark night, they said you could feel her breathing over the whole world. 
She was a god of starlight, more wonderful than anything that walked the earth. The beaked companion puts away the locket. We love Titania more than any other. Even more than Gaia herself, she was so beautiful. This entity in this prison, it calls itself Caspin. Do you know anything about this entity? They shudder. <sighs> yes, Caspin the Dreamweaver is what he was called. Caspin was an artist once. He could tell stories and dreams and bring the dreams themselves to life. When they came for him, he begged them for his life and his name. The Night Stalkers let him, let him keep both. Night Stalkers? You mean the Throne of the Night? Why would they have come for him? They, the Throne of the Night, were curious creatures. They sat under the pitch, pitch dark of the tall trees in their wide circles and would hum these sad little songs together, sway in unison. We, in our arrogance, I suppose, we didn't see them as any more than what we wanted to see. Sad little ground dwellers, cleaning up the scraps and slinking around the darkness beneath the canopy. When they see their Israel little songs to the plants, we didn't care to see the plants begin to bend to the song. We didn't want to see the bodies hung in the branches, so we didn't see them. First, there was travelers who started going missing. And then our own. We had ignored them for so long, by the time we started paying them any attention, they had turned foul. And what about Caspin? He was afraid, I believe. They came for him and took him down into the dark, and made him teach him things. Terrible things. They were curious, the troll of the night, and over time that curiosity took a... Excuse me. I'm sorry. It's alright. I didn't mean to push. No, it's quite at all right. Nobody here really talks about it any anymore, and so much get l it's lost to time. Causes. Their curiosity was like our own at first, but we wondered what the light at the star or in the sky, the trail of the night, had only the dark to comfort them. And at time, their curiosities took a, a cruel form. They weren't able to dream, you know, not like you or I, but they wanted to, so they took Caspin. The dream where we were into the dark and forced them to teach them how. But they couldn't. You understand? They aren't like us, so when Caspin tried to teach them, he. whatever he saw there in the dark. whatever horror they had come to know while they were singing in their little songs, I cannot imagine. When afterwards I asked him to betray us, he did so without question. What was the betrayal? They wanted to make a wish. He led them to Titania and let them make their wish. They say that when Nike, that when the Nike Soccers came, they came in long rows, single file. Shuffling silently through the dark woods, they found our blessed Titania, exactly where he had told them she would be. And with this and with his help, they made their wish. What was the wish? Classified, that expunged. See them 666613 for more information. We can conclude if you'd like. I I think it's for the best. I'm sorry, it's just it's just unforgivable. Oh, Laya, what did we do to you? Interview concludes. And now we have the next addendum. 6666.4 SCP-73 interview. SCP-73, I'm guessing, is Kane. The one who can actually talk. This interview was conducted by SCPF Western Regional Command Director Sophia Light. Huh. 
<sighs> Director Light, what a surprise this is. Here I thought that you didn't have sufficient time for little class threes like me anymore. Cheeky, Kane. But Sophia, please, Director Light was my father. Very well, Sophia. This is an unusual setting for the two of us. Was the occasion? Are you familiar with Project Paragon? Not only what they tell me, which is little in this case. Very hush hush, as many secrets that, as you've all, all had me keep, and still some of um, you chose to scroll away. Eh, hey, you know how it goes. Anyway, we've been following some anomalous activity over the last few years that has begun to escalate. I'm hoping you might be able to answer some questions I have about it. Hmm, you know, it occurs to me with the amount of anomalous activity you deal with on a day-to-day -day basis, after a while, wouldn't it start to wouldn't it just start to feel like activity? You can't imagine. Perhaps not, but I will strive to answer your questions as best as I can. I fear for what inquiries you might have if you're forced to come to me to resolve them. I need to know what you know about the Children of the Night. The Children of the Night. I have not heard that name in a long, long time. That is an old secret, Sophia. How did you stumble over it? We've had them classified for a long time now, the few who remain. A short video of one is seen in the United States is something of a fascination for amateur cryptozoologists. And while we've got them on the books, they're evolute capture up to until now. Their motives and origins remain a mystery to us. It's like their entire history has been swallowed up. Yes, yes, that was probably the point. Please, go on. Where to begin? A troll of the, of the night. First of all, to be clear, I've never counted them myself. They only came into my side of the world once, and a long ago. But I was otherwise occupied at the time. They came at the behest of their masters. Looking for someone who had committed a terrible sin. The first sin, in fact. Is this related to the entity called Assam? Director Light, you know more than you're letting on. I usually do. Continue. Yes, Adam L. Assam was my father and Lilith our mother. Assem was the first man, so technically speaking, we are all his children. But my brothers and I came first. I was the out. Oh, this. And then Abel. And then our youngest. Apologies. It's been some time. We know about Seth. Don't worry, he's 73. The sin that Assem admitted. Yes, he took something from a place that he should not have gone. And in response, the Children of the Night came across the sea to bring him to justice for it. <sighs> what happened to him? I can't say for certain. A salmon pulled a star from the sky and put it on his iron crown. What happened afterwards, my family was not the same afterwards. I was driven out. Abel was killed, and our youngest brother disappeared. His kingdom was abandoned, save for a sim. All I ever heard was that the children that came for him, and when they left, he was gone. Why are they called the Troll of the Night? In contrast to us, I imagine we, humanity as a whole, were born under the brilliant sun of, of my father. We were different than radiant beings, still glow oh, in that Magnificent light. We had been reduced slightly since our separation from it, just as across his body. But we are still, oh now, what we were then, even if we as a whole don't enjoy the same long life we once did. So we were the children of the sun.
Was everyone in Autodophilus the child of the sun? What did you say? Autodophilus, you're familiar with it? That city. I know you thought it would probably surprise me to learn that you know of it all, and it has, but... No, they weren't like us. Other beings were there as well, greater and more terrible than I by far, but none greater or more magnificent than my father. He, it was under his protection that our people and the secrets that were kept safe. When he was gone, the city diminished, and those secrets became vulnerable. There were those who remained and worked diligently to find a way to protect them, and the conditions of the place to make sure they stayed it hidden. But if they have become exposed again, yes, I see now why you have come to me. I'm not sure I understand. You must understand. The children of the night are not like you, or me, or even their uh, fair folk across the sea. What do you mean? I only know what I've heard. Like I said, I wasn't present when much of this took place. They say that when the children of the night were first born, they had all the curiosity of children, and when and the starlight of their masters was not sufficient to satisfy their curious desires, they found darker gods to pray to. Those gods demanded their pound of flesh in exchange for the powers required to fulfill the children of the night's desires. And that pound would come from the history of mankind. As it would swarm with civilization, pull into the earth, all record of it would cease to be, and this would be their payment. You mentioned that before as well. Who were their masters? Ah, well, it was the fairies who made them, or rather, who wished for them, or so I'm told. The fairies worshipped Titania, the goddess of starlight and wishes. And when my father, my father was beautiful and magnificent, certainly, but a stray request by a child at the sea set a seed of envy in his heart, and his light was turned to, or to single, uh, singular desire, one that ended in the very first sin. That sin was so blasphemous to the fairies they had no choice but to respond. So the fairies brought them into existence to kill your father? Perhaps, or perhaps to protect themselves. The troll of the stars saw my father's light rising in the east and prayed to salvation to Atonia for salvation. I do not know what they prayed for or what it cost them. It was not long after their dad voices began telling tales those of tall figures huddled just beyond a dark tree line on those far shores. In time, they came for the world of men, and not before they turned on their masters as well. They are destroyers. If they find prominence in this world again, they will not rest until they drag us back into the earth. They are not something you can simply kill with tanks and guns. They are a divine aberration. What's happened to them? You've heard of the, a day of flowers, maybe not. I was far away a from the man, lands of men then, but every flower on the planet bloomed at once, and then the rains began to fall. Once the flood water, waters had settled, all well, the years later there was little left, and the children of the nights were gone. This is a lot to take in, but it's valuable information. Thank you. I wish I had more to offer, but alas, my absence throughout most of the ancient history of man puts me at a distinct disadvantage here. I understand. How old are you, Cain? <laughs> Sophia, honestly, I can't tell you. I have long since lost track. The years slip by and each lifetime becomes just another drop in an increase easily expansive ocean of memories. In ages past, I have lived countless other lives by other names in other places. It's impossible to say. Will you go on forever? My longevity has persisted as a blessing for my father, 
but it will not last forever. The most I can hope to accomplish is to correct our wrongs such as they are, for I too slip quietly into the darkness. Well, if you think of anything else, please let me- Wait. Pardon? This. Alright, this is going to sound like a long shot, but there may be someone else you can speak to. Who? There was this old sorcerer who served the ancient and Davite house of Maldrag. I presume if you found Autodopolis, you have no doubt uncovered some, tr some truths about the old kingdoms of mortal men. We have. Good. Methuselah was the name of the sorcerer, learned Learn from a dying Deva queen how to prolong his life with blood magic. He's been poking around history ever since, appearing in places of power or near them. I don't know if he was ever welcomed into the house of Apollyon, where the true secrets of the time would have been discussed. But I don't doubt for a second that he would have attempted to hang around them, peddling his wares. He has delusions of grandeur, but he is certainly capable of some very real magic. Where do you think this person would be? I'm not certain. He would be very old by now. Hundreds of thousands of years, certainly. I'm not sure what effect that would have on his mind, but he would have been there. He might know more about your children of the night. I see. Kane, your memory is photographic, isn't it? It is. By the way, photographic memory is actually a complete myth and does not actually exist. Now let's continue. Do you think you could re remember this Methuselah if you saw his face? Of course. Director Light produces her mobile ter terminal. After a moment, she turns it to show SCP-73. Is this him? It is. Where did you get that picture? <sighs> if you can believe it, he's in another side of the he's in another wing of the site. For two it is is for you Sophia. Yes, I would talk to that man at where are you. He's not quite as old as I am, but he was present for things I was not. His insight would be invaluable to you. It's probably worth asking you whether or not Abel would. SV-73 holds up a hand. I can stop you there. My brother... My brother has suffered. These many years, he is angry, as I am sure you well know, and would be wholly uninterested in questions of history, even if he had been there to witness them. Moreover, my brother has been in confined to that sarcophagus for a long time. Even if he was willing to offer you insight, I do not think he would have anything to give. Thank you, Kane. This has been very helpful. Think nothing of it. Although, yes, if it's not too much to inquire. In Autodopolis, you might have found a man, perhaps just one man, or even his remains. If you, if you have found this man, perhaps you could let me know. I just, there was myself and Abel, our youngest brother. It's just been such a long time. I can't help but wonder if I could. I'm sorry, Kane. You know I wouldn't be able to do that, even if I wanted to. Ah, uh, yes, of course, I understand. I would have quite liked to have... to have apologized to him, my little brother. Uh, but we all have regrets, yes? And that is the end of this interview. Now we have addendum 66665. Excerpt from the Journal of Winston J. Connington. 
I think this will be the last one before we finish up today's video. The following is an excerpt taken from the Journal of Winston J. Connington, an 18th century English is archaeologist and occultist who, who has gathered a number of items and writings that reference antediluvian events of persons in the collections called the Connington Set. Additional excerpts from this document are available in Addendum 4812-1. We've already seen it. 48.12, I think. In my great effort to research those most ancient and forgotten places of our history, I have come across several references to an old kingdom of men, one that existed long before the kingdoms of Europe or the Arabs, perhaps older even than Noah and the Great Flood itself. Many of these I have chronicled elsewhere, but perhaps the most elusive is a is parable with, read by an individual who titled himself as a Gom of Nod, which I believe details events that took place near the end of the rule of those ancient Sky Kings. Elsewhere in my writing, I have detailed details of the four knights of House Apollyon, but never was their origin was their origin made evident to me. And yet now I have acquired a piece of parchment, reserved in salt, that was given to me by the Sultan Mustafa III of the Ottoman. The text he described as illegible is written in the same crude cipher as other pieces I found in similar ancient writings. The words on the page are faint from the years, but with the aid of my servant Gerard, we believe if to have accurately described the words here, the only Greek creation of Gomovnad's parable left on this earth. The words of Gom. Son of Nod, speak to guide us of these tales from the old world. Oh wait. <laughs> Once there was a warrior, fair and strong, with eyes of green and air arbon air. His laughter was like rolling waves, and his rage was like a thunderclap. He was loved far and wide, and those who beheld him marveled at his craftsmanship, saying, Surely this is the one descended from or is from Assem, who lived in ages past. Beloved was he above all others, but more so by his king, the lord of hosts and sovereign of the skies. In the king's time of greatest need, he called upon the warrior, grant his power. And the warrior answered, by sword or the or text damage, until the king's enemies had been driven to dust or his text damage. In return for his service, the king offered his champion a single favor, saying thus, For you, champion of champions, let my voice be clear. That I want you to know that it is number 15, Burger or King Foot Lettuce. That's the voice I'm trying to do. Heaven and earth are no boundary, nor life and death a barrier. Whatsoever you desire, it will be yours. And say it, the warrior, Lord of hosts, beloved among sovereigns, I beg only your service, that I may serve you from this day until the last days of men, that I may give you my heart without reservation, to keep in your presence until the sun goes out. Saith the king, So it shall be, for or you will serve me, most loyal and noble of knights. Your spear shall be my spear, and your voice shall be my voice. Your heart will be mine forever, and when your service has ended, and you will rest at my side in the halls of my, of my fathers. Then did that great warrior service king through text damage. It came out then that the king, although he had grown, set his sights for a final conquest across the sea after text damage. Text damage. The sickness sweep over those knights of the king and for fought, and he was put into them. Driven by madness and agony, one by one they cried out to the dark and fell gods for comfort from their tribulation, and one by one they succumbed to the evil put in them. All that is but a, a but the great champion. He had given his heart to his king, and though his king now slept in the darkest mire of the sea, his loyalty did not waver. He became before this king's son, misshapen and altered, and cried out to him, saying, my lord, my lord, save me, please. Take pity on my condition. 
in remembrance of the service I have given freely to your father in your house this, these many years. Free me from this weaknesses so that I might serve you again. And did say to king's last son, Knight, loyalty, have you served my house? With this abomination you have become the the noble halls of my father. While the sickness possesses you, you may not reside here in this sacred place, nor may you call yourself warrior of my house. Turn from the evil god of our foe and find a, a dark root from it which this hair or flowers. Cut it down. See its pale shepherds driven before you. And to come, not to these vile alterations. Do this, and the halls of my house will open unto you again. If loyalty to my father, who you have left in your wretched heart, then waste no time. Go and seek your our salvation in the black forests beyond the sea, where my father did seal our doom, for no such salvation remains for us but to excise a dress to Tanya from its soil. Do this. And regain your honor. Cursing and lamenting this tragedy, the warrior fled from those high halls like a riding beast, a hurricane of torment and terror. And the people of his lord's kingdom wept and gnashed their teeth when they saw what had become of him. Who once stood by either king's side, the warrior passed the end from sight and mind, and his name was never again uttered in that ancient land. When the king's son and was broken by the tool of his enemy and fell into the darkness. His crown lost, he cursed his foe and the knights, knights of, of his father. He saved his father's rebuke for the great champion of his house. And in the darkness he had text damaged. Alright, that was the last item for today. We will be continuing this tomorrow. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like on the video, comment down below, and subscribe to the channel. If you did not enjoy the video, then you wasted about 32 minutes. Tomorrow we'll be going over or some more addendums. Today was 3 to 5, so part 2. I hope you enjoyed the video. I'll be seeing you tomorrow with more or of this document because it never ends. Goodbye.